Once again, it has been zero days since the last Ohio State nonsense. Ryan Day is trying to spout up at the mouth at Jim Harbaugh, who's no longer with Michigan. Uh, so naturally, we're going to continue to talk about any kind of weirdness that comes out of Columbus. And lots of younger players mentioned in the last two days for, that are stepping up in spring ball. Let's talk about all of that on this episode of Locked On Wolverines. You are Locked On Wolverines. Your daily podcast on the Michigan Wolverines, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Happy Tuesday. We are back and doing it. Locked On Wolverines podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. I am your man on the ground, Isaiah Hole, publisher of Wolverines Wire through USA Today Sports Media Group. And uh, we're going to have a little bit of a shorter show. Uh, I'll explain why kind of nor- more towards the end. But let's talk about Ryan Day who in going on Columbus radio and discussing the fact that they hired Oregon uh, running backs coach uh, Carlos Lachlan to replace uh, Tony Alford, who departed Columbus for Ann Arbor, Michigan. He decided that it was a good idea to try to get in a little dig at a coach who's no longer at Michigan, who he went one and three against. I mean, some would say one and two because he lost one to Sharon Moore. Depends on what kind of way you want to look at it. Nonetheless, as a losing record against Jim Harbaugh. So he says this, like some of us in this profession, he came up not in a football family, talking about Carlos Lachlan, but grew up and kind of had to figure it out on his own. Obviously, shot at Jim Harbaugh. Uh, at least that's how it's being perceived, not just by Michigan fans. I first saw it uh, via uh, uh, the Silver Bulletin on Twitter. And uh, they said, Appears Day is taking a subtle shot at Jim Harbaugh, who certainly grew up in a football family. Uh, it does seem that way, and it has caused all kinds of uh, l- pointing and laughing at Ohio State, right? Um, again, there's a difference between b- being born on this. It's they do not understand the quote. Jim Harbaugh said, some people are standing on third base and think that they hit a triple, but they didn't. Some people use it to say born. He, he said standing out. I got corrected by a reader once when I had typed out the quote, uh, as I thought from memory. He said standing. Some people are standing on third base. Um, it, there's a difference between understanding your privilege and not. Jim Harbaugh credits his family, credit, uh, credits uh, both his father, Jack, and John all of the time. He also uh, has made his own way and has been something of a turnaround artist. He's taken over programs that were not in good shape. Like San Diego wasn't in terrible shape, but he really turned it into something it wasn't previously. Uh, Then you've got uh, Stanford, which was a perennial doormat, and he turned that into a very respectable program, one that is was really respected up until the last year or two, despite it having fallen off for a while. The San Francisco 49ers had not even made, uh, it went from winning Super Bowls kind of perennially to uh, not making the, uh, either making the playoffs and losing, but not having made the NFC Championship or the playoffs in a long time. And uh, a couple years after uh, Jim Harbaugh takes over, well, the first year he takes over, they go to the playoffs, NFC Championship game, and they uh, actually go to the Super Bowl in year, was it two? Maybe three? I can't remember which one. Year two of Jim Harbaugh's tenure. And, uh, and then he takes over a five and seven Michigan team. One that again, I remember pundit saying like, he's going to turn them around, but he'll still be lucky if they can make a bowl game in year one and they go 10 and three. So Ryan day still does not understand that he inherited what was a powerhouse as built by urban Meyer. Right. I'm not saying for all, all you Ohio state watchers and listeners, I am not saying Ohio state is not a good program under Ryan day. And this is going to be the sh- to the chagrin of Michigan fans here. It is a good program. He is a good coach. The problem is, is his style of play is not conducive to playing a team built as Michigan has been built the last three years. Okay, it's it, it's the type of team that yeah that you they can go out and they they can beat ninety nine percent of teams handily. But some teams, it's like like Jim Harbaugh found their kryptonite under Ryan Day, and it was two things. Number one, physicality, obviously. Number two, not telegraphing your play calls defensively every single play. <laughs> so, uh, to me, this is hilarious. 
and uh, it, that it, it what's included with it has been some weird laughing about recruiting rankings that has been going on uh, in the last 24 hours or so because Ohio State's gotten a slew of recruits. Michigan still has none, uh, no no commits under Sharon Moore as of yet, uh, which is troubling, right? You do Michigan does need to do something, but it's just like. What do we talk about on this very show every single year for you who have followed along since longer than the Connor Stallion saga? Every single year, uh, save really for last year when Michigan had a slew of uh, commits already, and I was kind of erroneous the year before, but generally every single year what we're talking about is there's not an r- issue when Michigan doesn't have a lot of commits at this time of year. And then by June, you're like, man, this class has really turned out to be really good. Well, Ohio State fans are falling for it to some degree. And uh, I've seen multiple accounts on my For You page uh, who are uh, trying to, to mock Michigan for being ranked way down in the recruiting rankings after winning a national championship. Again, it is troubling. I'm not saying that isn't because you hope to build off of a national championship. But uh, a uh, Twitter account that I, uh, that I came across here, The Conquering Hero, uh, used the, uh, the Simpsons meme, Don't Make Me Tap the Sign, and, and he has his own tweet embedded here. And it, it's so spot on and it helps. It's kind of a primer and it's not something that I had thought of something of a primer to help you kind of understand exactly what Ohio state fans are at this juncture. And he says, quote, what you need to understand about Ohio state is that since the Meyer era, they are primarily a recruiting fan base that views the actual games as side quests. It explains their entitlement because they can't wrap their heads around teams with lower recruits beating them. I mean, I think you have a ton of truth in that. And you add in the fact that they had started to feel like it was their birthright to beat Michigan uh, due to how much Trestle owned Lloyd Carr and then Rich Rodriguez. And uh, and then you have uh, uh, Urban Meyer coming in uh, in the uh, really early stages of the Brady Hoke era and just continuing the dominance after one off with Luke Fickle. So... uh, I, I do think that it is like I remember seeing people saying some friends of mine that are in the Ohio State media being like, when's Michigan even going to win another game? We're talking like 2019 ish. They're like, I, they might not win another one in the series ever, only to <laughs> only to find out that they Ohio State wouldn't win one for the next four years. So anyway, it's continued bravado. And I that is the fact that Ryan Day is taking shots like that is again proof that he's chasing right and i understand ohio state fans got really mad at me last week when i had tweeted about um uh, about uh how just off they are with the whole you know uh the whole michigan nil deal right they they just did not seem to understand that michigan's using nil at more so as it's intended to be and the transfer portal again as it's intended to be but I, I don't have a problem, really, truly, with Ohio State doing what it's doing with either, because honestly, that's the law. I mean, if the NCAA isn't going to enforce anything, then everyone's going to go nuts. Ohio State's just taking advantage of that. But what it does is it tells you how much they are chasing. If they're not just chasing a championship, they are doing that. But when Michigan wins a national championship, they are chasing, right? Ryan Day is fighting for his job. And this isn't the first time we've seen Ohio State people spout out at the mouth, like from the uh, Hang 100, which was behind closed doors, admittedly. Or you have the Brian Hartline Skull Sessions, uh, where he, uh, where he, you know, talked about what they do in the dark is going to come to light. And, you know, all they heard, heard is talk coming out of Ann Arbor, blah, blah, blah. That's somewhere before he said he'd beat Mike Hart in a fight, which is, again, odd behavior. But uh, nonetheless, what this tells you is that they are chasing. and. I mean, some other people have pointed it out, and I'm just going to reiterate it. They, it, the soft mentality continues. So, so gone from both the uh, the coaching staff and the fan base is this proud. You know, it, it used to be when Ohio State took the field. Even when I was a student, I remember going in 2007 and seeing them taking the field for the very first time, and it was like seeing a bunch of celebrities out there. And that's even with Todd Beckman at quarterback. It was like. Oh my gosh, that's Ohio State. And then every subsequent time that I saw Ohio State in person, it was like, I, it, even in the media, it was just kind of like starstruck, right? I didn't even have that reaction when I saw Alabama either time that I saw Alabama. It was a little harder to this last time, but 2019, certainly 
even though they didn't have a very good year. I mean, it was Nick Saban. It was, you know, a, you know Devontae Smith and Jerry Judy and all of those guys. Uh, so it, the, it's, they had an aura about them. And that aura, at least for Michigan, is completely gone. There's no one left on that, uh, on that roster that knows what it's like to beat Michigan. I don't believe. Maybe there's one, like a sixth-year guy. But, man, it's <laughs> if you're a Michigan fan, stuff like this is good news because it just goes to show how much Michigan is in their heads. And as much as you think, like, well, that means the result is going to change, like we saw the same tepidness last year as we saw two years ago. So uh, that's uh, it's good news. Good news day. Um, all right, we're going to continue on. We've got plenty more to talk about. Uh, we've got uh, all kinds of players being mentioned either side of the ball uh, in the last two uh, press conferences, which I was at. So we'll talk about some of those guys. And we're going to do that here in just a moment. But before we do, when you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you've got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn is not just another job board, much like Connor Stallions has. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals. Connor has more than that, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you've got that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn is also constantly finding new ways to make the process easier. They've just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even easier and quicker. So post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnCollege. That's LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnCollege to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, let's continue on here. Um, so there are a lot of names that are being dropped uh, here at the last couple of press conferences. We had uh, had some uh, position coaches. We had Brian Jean-Marie and Grant Newsom yesterday. I really wanted to ask. I wasn't going to uh, because it, like that's starting off on a really wrong foot. Uh, ask Brian Jean-Marie about his, uh, his comments when he got to Tennessee about Michigan being a tennis crowd which still is hilarious to me because he never coached in front of fans. Like, yeah, I was really quiet in the big house. Well, that's because there were a smattering of uh, families that were in the crowd and that was it. Um, but uh, we had him, we had Grant Newsom, and they talked a bit about, uh, among other things, the young bucks who are coming up. We talked to three players today, Miles Hinton, uh, Tyler Morris, and Josiah Stewart, and they talked about some of the younger guys as well. Name that just keeps coming up and coming up and coming up. It came up from Brian Jean-Marie, came up from uh, Josiah Stewart today, uh, is Eno Etta, who is uh, seemingly just a force. Now, it sounded like he had moved inside, kind of based off of some things we had heard last week, which I think we talked about. Uh, but it, it so actually, it sounds like he's cross-training, according to Josiah Stewart, who says he's still playing edge as well. He's got a lot of power. He, he's, got, he's working on his finesse moves but he's obviously a behemoth at nearly 300 pounds. So you're looking at kind of like more of a Mike Morris sized edge rusher who can play inside. So I'm excited to see how he gets deployed, but I think that the hype is real. At least you hope it is, you know, you never know a spring, even though with this is being a new staff, uh, you, you just hope that it's more of the Aiden Hutchinson, the Mozzie Smith, uh, the, uh, the Mason Graham, Kenneth Grant variety and less of the, no offense to him, less of the, the Donovan Jeter. You know, the or the even the Josh Ross, right? Josh Ross ended up being a fine player for Michigan. Just the expectations heaped upon him were immense when it was just right out the gates. He's going to be better than Devin Bush. He's already better than Devin Bush. He's faster. He hits harder. And it was like, that's certainly not going to be true. Um, but nonetheless, I think that with Eno Etta, there's a lot to really like there. Former four star. You know, it, he's the type of guy that you would you would have liked to have seen maybe a little bit in his freshman year, but I mean they had bodies already. So I, I think it's exciting to hear a name like his come up because it it really kind of bodes well for the depth that they absolutely need, right? Like we know that in the interior they're really good with those first two, but you have to remember they lost a couple different guys. They lost Cam Good. They uh, obviously lost Chris Jenkins. They still have Rayshon Benny. He was getting a little. Uh, little work in uh, while we were there at the press conference today. I think it was Rayshon. 
that was doing it. It might have been uh, Raheem Anderson. I can't remember. Like now, it's not because I can see that uh, that far. I honestly just got them conflated with our names just now. Um, but uh, nonetheless, we, we I've seen Rayshon in the facility uh, within the last uh, couple days. So uh, he has been getting his work in. Um, I just don't remember if it was him today or Raheem. Uh, nonetheless, there, there, there's a lot to like about uh, that room, and it just gets better if you have an Eno Etta. TJ Guy is not a young guy, but he's gotten a ton of mentions. I think you're going to see him really take a step up uh, because it just seems like every time that ed- any of the edge rushers uh, are brought up uh, outside of Derek Moore and Josiah Stewart, it's uh, TJ Guy. That's happened probably four times so far in about seven press conferences. So that really also bodes well for the edge rushing room. Where I am concerned is still the uh, the wide receiver room. And we spoke to Tyler Morris today, and like he's taking on a pretty solid leadership role. And what he like he's challenging himself, but he's also challenging the other players. Like he he told Samaj, like, yeah, last year you had a lot of quick game. That was great. You need to be way more well rounded this year because it's necessary. I think that 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 shows the culture in action, and that is exactly what Michigan needs is uh, having the culture kind of continue. Right. And not kind of continue, absolutely continue. And it needs to be player driven. That shows that the culture is still working. And that was one of the things that uh, Brian John Marie said was different when he came back is like, man, the culture is just it was different. Right. Like that was so much more player led. Like there was a lot more pride and in, in doing some certain things and all of that. And, and I, I think that that in and of itself bodes well. Now, you still need production. And Michigan doesn't have a lot of that at the wide receiver position. They've got four touchdowns amongst the whole room returning. One from Tyler Morris, uh, two from Samaj Morgan, and uh, and then you've uh, got the uh, the what you, the one uh, from uh, Peyton O'Leary. I think that was against Nebraska. So um, they they do have to step up. But Frederick Moore also got has been getting a lot of mention lately. And uh, he's talked about as being a guy who, who, as Tyler Morris said, they he's I talked to him, I challenged him, I said, you need to be our deep ball guy. So you need to be able to do that. Now, if Frederick Moore comes along, he can do that, especially considering what Michigan wants to do and the fact that Donovan Edwards can catch the ball, Kate Colston Loveland can catch the ball. That would bode very well for Michigan because that is that would then make me look at it and say, okay, maybe it's not so bad. Yeah, you still want to have about eight or nine receivers. I just maybe going back to the Josh Gaddis era when he used to talk about that on the record and tell me personally, like, man, if we could just have eight to ten or whatever uh, on the roster, we're just really shy. They don't have that right now. They really have four. <laughs> so um, if that, right, they've got, uh, I mean, you include Peyton O'Leary in that, that's four. And then you've got the two freshmen. That It's a very, very light room. They need to add to it. But uh I think that uh, some of the things that we're hearing uh, are certainly positive. Let's uh, let's talk about some uh, some guys on defense, and if we have time, which again I don't know that we're we're not going the distance today. Uh, we'll get to uh, maybe even the quarterbacks, but I feel like that's probably going to come tomorrow. Actually, we'll just go ahead and say that's going to come tomorrow. Talking about the quarterback situation, so we will talk about some of the other defensive standouts uh, that so far in spring, and we will get to that here in just a moment. But before we do, passion, drive, and patience, the winning, uh, sorry, the formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home the huge win. So keep your ride or die alive uh, with eBayMotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. All right, so this episode's not going quite as short as I thought. Uh, why do I want to keep it short? You know, I would prefer generally to go the full 30 um, because I am sick as a dog right now. And I know you probably, if you're listening, you might not be able to hear it. If you look watching, maybe you can't hear I am in a significant amount of pain right now, but I really, really wanted to get a, get a show in here. I didn't want to let, let us lapse all the way till Wednesday. Um, since, uh, 
you know, lately, if, uh, if I have a day like yesterday, Monday, where I travel to Ann Arbor and everything, I, I tend to not necessarily uh, do a show that night. But uh, I'm bummed because I can't go to the gym. I've been making some good progress, and the plan all day was to go to the gym, and I was sitting there writing, uh, started writing a wide receiver stuff that we just talked about, and uh, whole body was like, nope, you need to put the computer down. You need to just lay down and relax for a while. Um, so, like, full on, like, just not not in a good spot. Uh, as I sent Sarah the gif of, uh, bro, I'm straight up not having a good time. That's where I'm at. Uh, but you know who is having a good time? That's what we call a quality segue. <laughs> is uh, some of the some of the guys who are stepping up at corner and nickel, and we're hearing the kind of names you want to hear. Uh, ask Tyler Morris what who who outside of Will Johnson has given you trouble back there. And DJ Waller took him no time. He didn't mention a second name. Well, he did say like oh, everyone's doing good. Like okay, like now that now in fairness, the culture change that was when that started instead of guys being singled out all the time. So, I mean, if it means winning and us hearing less quality information, information, then fine, but still, come on. Like we, I can't write, you know, you know, Michigan cornerback standouts in the spring ball, colon, everybody, <laughs> you know, but DJ Waller, he said is the guy who is really, really standing out to him there. Uh, and uh, talked about his size and speed and all of those things. So that is, I, I feel good enough right now if I was to do a depth chart, which we'll probably do one uh, sometime in the next week or so, and then we'll talk about it on the show. He would be my starting, uh, my other starting corner opposite uh, Will Johnson at this juncture, which I don't think I would have had him necessarily as that guy. I would have looked at uh, maybe uh, Cody Jones or Miles Pollard as being that guy. Um which, I mean, we've heard kind of those guys mentioned, but just not nearly as much as DJ Waller. Uh, at Nickelback, he mentioned a couple of names. First out of his mouth was Jaden McBurrows. I don't think that surprises. We saw him play that role when Mikey Sainer still moved over uh, to uh, cornerback in the Maryland game. He had, uh, had a pretty good game, uh, I thought, uh, there. So he was the first one, but he said he's seen some Zeke Berry there. There's another name, who, which I can't suddenly remember, who's also uh, done well there. But um, I, I could see that working. I think that that would be a, a good place to go. Linebacker, I asked uh, Brian Jean-Marie, who's uh, stood out uh, behind the, uh, the two that are obvious, and Jay Sean Barham and Ernie Hausman, and he, he said the name I wanted to hear. He said Jaden Hood, and that's the second straight spring that we've heard that. We saw Jaden Hood get some pretty good, uh, good, pretty good time early last year. Uh, but then it just kind of fell off, right? So, like, good enough where he came out to the media, uh, you know, like came out to meet with the media. And uh, that was, uh, you know, that's always a good sign, right? Like, that you're you're ascending. Like, I mean, he had had a really good game, so it was no surprise that he uh, was given to us. But um, nonetheless, he, he's the name that I'm really looking forward to. And uh, Micah Pollard also, who is a guy that we just don't even think about. I haven't mentioned Micah Pollard. I kind of forget about him. Uh, which, I mean, we probably shouldn't. He's got NFL blood in him, right? He's the son of uh, the the tight end. Uh, why the first name is escaping me from Indianapolis, who played with Jim Harbaugh, uh, was a heck of a tight end. He's got the NFL blood. We've seen how that works sometimes. So uh, I like the trajectory of, again, the defensive depth, and I think that it's looking really, really good. And uh, offensive line, it, that's... Uh, that seems like it's starting to kind of come together. I, I get put together a little piece yesterday of uh, here's the the the, the starting uh, not the starting but the uh, lineman who got specific mentions by uh, Grant Newsom and they were the, they're the five that I would put in the starting lineup. But we're also hearing some good things about some guys like Evan Link. I've heard his name mentioned more than a, more than once in the last uh, two days, so that's good. Um, anyway, that's going to do it for us today. Uh, the plan is to be back tomorrow, but again, like I said, I am under the weather right now unfortunately. So hopefully, uh, hopefully it's a quick recovery. And if it is, then we will be back tomorrow. Uh, so anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. We will talk to you again soon. Peace.